Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining for the webinar today. Uh, my name is Victoria Gnadoga, and I am the Global Packaging Analyst with uh, the Global Market Research from Mintel. Uh, we specialize in innovation and consumer research around the world. And what I would like to share with you today is uh, the latest packaging innovations and trends that truly speak about the functional packaging versus disruptive and how we can use packaging innovation today to bridge the gap um, in the markets. Um, the um, uh, examples that I will share with you uh, will be based on uh, the global new product database, uh, the product of Mintel, where we monitor products around the world with the latest innovation in packaging. And they will sh be combined with the consumer data that truly speaks about the needs of today consumers and what does innovation mean for the consumers, what are the brands doing in the market, and if there is an existing gap, what can be done um, to uh, minimize it and essentially to create uh, products that address those uh, really needs of the consumers. So you will see the examples from existing and emerging markets. Um, also, they will speak to both trends that are current in the market and that we see developing at a high speed, but also some of the emerging that might be at a slower development level, but we can sh uh, share some examples and projections of what we will see happening in the future. And finally, at the end, I will provide you some key takeaways and bonus perspectives on uh, that you hopefully can um, take back with you and uh, use at your own um, categories or uh, businesses. Um, so what we have seen in the past years that there have been a lot of uh, packaging innovation. And um, on this chart here, you can see in the blue uh, which is the new packaging. So based on uh, the Mintel Global New Product Database, we monitor uh, the new product launches around the world based on these criteria, such as new formulation, new packaging, new product, new variety, and relaunch. And what's interesting that in the time period from 2009 to 2014, the percentage change in new packaging introduction has been the highest. And as you've seen here, um, it shows the biggest growth compared to all other type of launches. And while, of course, we cannot claim that all of these new packaging introductions uh, are benefiting the consumers or uh, not necessarily maybe all of them are addressing consumer needs, but what's important to recognize when we look at this high growth is that more and more brands and companies are recognizing the importance of packaging in um, providing consumers with uh, functional packaging and also addressing their various needs. Uh, and also, even if it's done for entertainment or fun purposes, it's really important to see how packaging is being leveraged in different levels. Uh, when we speak about functionality in packaging and how brands are focusing on that, we see the main two uh, ways uh, how it's positioned. So it can be focused on function and utility. Uh, on this chart here, we see when we ask consumers in the U.S. what are the top three functional desired food packaging attributes, and over 90% of the consumers mention freshness, about 80% mention reseal capability, and over 70% say that easy to open feature of packaging is tremendously important to them because it allows them to use the product and make sure that the content is um, fresh, that they can actually reseal it and put it on shelf and reuse it later. And of course, the easy to open uh, feature. Um, for example, uh, one of the examples on the right is uh, the chocolate bar. Uh, a lot of times, uh, it's really difficult uh, to easy open the um, chocolate bar just by simply pulling it apart. We see on the Lacta example from Greece, uh, on the back, they actually give the instructions how with just simple uh, pull uh, on opposite sides, you can easily open the pack. So features like that are really important to the consumers. We have seen a lot of resellability um, functions added to products and pouches, whether that's um, granola, a lot of breakfast cereals, rice, pasta, because that's really speaks to consumers and their needs. Another way to look at the functionality is to focus on the utility. And the utility, again, when we ask consumers in the US, uh, they prefer the packaging that's 
not a recyclable and also today we see that consumers are expecting the brands to give them the recyclable packaging because it becomes a norm uh, in the industry when brands no longer have to go and claim and pack that their packaging is recyclable but it should be there already as that the consumer's expectation and another important part of that utility is repurposing uh, more and more consumers, especially in the higher margin products, are looking for products that and packaging that they don't have, you know, they just use it and throw it away, but that they can reuse later and repurpose in their household. Um, there are various ways how to do it. One of the examples, for instance, here we see from the uh, champagne bottle in France that was launched for the uh, most recent Christmas season, that uh, the outer packaging, the carton box, becomes actually uh, a double used device. So it's uh, the, the bottom part uh, is a cooler where you can just add ice and a cool bottle of champagne. Uh, so that solves uh, obviously the purpose you don't need uh, to purchase a separate cooler, but also um, it allows you to repurpose the packaging. And the top part has uh, little uh, holes in it and with the metallic cover on the inside, it serves as a candle holder where if you lit up a candle, um, again, it kind of matches uh, the product. Uh, we have seen uh, this similar approach done a lot in like beer products where the multi-pack of a beer would become also a cooler. Um, so this and uh, other ways of utilizing and repurposing the packaging is something really that speaks to the consumers because they see an added value and also an extra benefit uh, for the price they pay. Uh, looking in other ways of how functionality of packaging is expressed in various products and categories, uh, we always come to the three most important functions, which is dosing, protection, and getting it out. And uh, it essentially speaks to two very important uh, things that we're seeing in the industry, food waste and the package waste. While we hear a lot of government organizations and other um, uh, nonprofit organizations speaking about the food waste, what is important to remember that packaging is actually there to help to fight the food waste. If we have functional solutions in the market that help us to um, use the product longer, to be able to measure the shelf life um, if it's a fresh product in the fridge, to be able to get every last drop of the product out of the pack, whether that's a shampoo, a ketchup, um, uh, anything that's liquid in the bottle, that will really increase the way that we minimize the food waste because packaging solutions allow us to use every last bit of a product that we buy um, and when we look at the type of dosings there are many ways and indeed we're seeing the brands recognizing the importance of this function uh, for example on the slide on uh, the left you can see an example from Heinz when in France they launched cooking sauces however they realized that People do not necessarily want to use the whole pack of a sauce for one time of cooking. So they provided this um, eight, a single serve and uh, one dose uh, little um, uh, uh, parts of sauce that uh, consumers can easily separate and just use for one cooking and then save the rest for later. Um, the ocean spray uh, on the right, uh, as you see on the, on the other side of our carton box, there is um, a measure with a strip that allows you to see how much product is left uh, in the box. That's also very important because it allows consumers to not only see how much product is left and also they can plan how much they need uh, so that they can avoid the uh, food spoilage and food waste. Um, looking at the uh, household products, um, the interest in new functional features and benefits that allow to dose the product and to get every drop out is indeed very important. On the slide here, you can see our latest data from um, the U.S. market where we ask consumers what are the features that they're most interested in into the household product. And uh, the four um, you could see with a blue drop uh, on the right next to the sentence, they all speak about an ability and mechanisms in packaging that allow to ensure that every drop of a product is used, that the proper amount is dispensed so that consumers can avoid overdosing. This is particularly important in the concentrated products because an ability to combine the right amount of concentrated product 
with water is very important. And then, of course, of all kinds of refillable options that, again, help to save the product, but also avoid uh, using uh, more new packaging, but an ability to reuse the same pack again and again. Some of the examples that we've seen on the markets from last year uh, that are really very um, speak to all these features is um, the Mr. Clean from Procter & Gamble that features the auto stop cap. Um, that's the product on, on the left, uh, part of a slide that as you see, if you turn the bottle upside down, just with one squeeze of a bottle, you get exactly one uh, dose of a product that's enough for one bucket of water um, to clean uh, the floor or whatever other else in, in the household. Um, the replenished product um, was first launched in 2011, and we have seen it coming up with other products like hand soap uh, uh, later in 2014. Um, so the idea was that there is a refill pot on the bottom of a bottle, and it has a highly concentrated product. Uh, you just simply attach it to the bottom uh, of the bottle and you squeeze a desired amount of product into that kind of a wolf inside the main bottle and then you just mix it with the water and the refill pot can be detached so it does not uh, really need to be connected all the time and so the main bottle with the trigger spray um, it claims to be enough for 10,000 trigger uses so consumers can really by purchasing one time this kind of whole device all they have to do later is to replenish the pots and they also have the ability to choose um, different scents so that really speaks to how the same packaging can be used many times but it also provides a great dosing mechanism um, that especially is essential in the household uh, cleaning products looking at the other ways of how we can get all product out of the pack there really has not been so much technology there has been a lot of that are not uh, commercialized yet but however some that uh, have really a potential future uh, that we can see uh, hopefully coming in the markets um, sometime this or next year so for instance one of the examples is liquid light that was developed by the mit um, uh, researchers and it's a type of a coating that can be applied to any packaging on an inside and what it allows is just by simply um, turning upside down the bottle, you can uh, get every product out of the pack. Um, they've tested it on anything from liquid laundry detergent to ketchups and peanut butter and sauces, shampoos, toothpaste, and it really works out well and gives consumers an ability to really use that every bit out of a product. Um, so hopefully we will see technologies like that really being embraced by the brands and companies and coming out of the market uh, soon. The other important um, uh, trend that we see in the functional packaging is smart packaging uh, that comes along with the smart solutions and how that provides uh, uh, consumers with uh, this high functionality. What is important to mention here that smart packaging uh, has been uh, thought as a, something that's for fun and entertainment. Uh, we have seen a lot of examples in alcohol beverages categories that leverage that to create some fun um, a product for consumers. However, there are also a lot of applications that are really smart and important. For instance, the medicine compliance, uh, the uh, avoiding the food spoilage and, and things like that. However, what's always important to remember when we talk about smart packaging is the cost that comes with it. Uh, indeed, we have the data that I'll show you in the next slides that we asked consumers if they were to be offered a smart packaging solution, would they be willing to have it? But also we ask them whether they would be willing to pay for it. And of course, usually the response comes with a quite a bit of difference because consumers are willing to have those smart packaging solutions that is their line that address their needs, but they're not always willing to um, pay for it. Uh, therefore, uh, we have seen some examples on the market, but of course the question comes to whether the brands are the only one that need to absorb all the costs. So for instance, here on this chart, we have um, we asked consumers the value of a smart packaging and whether they would be willing to pay uh, for a packaging that lets them know that food is safe to eat, and that food has been stored at a safe temperature. And indeed, the results come at a pretty high rate across 
almost all age ranges um, of the consumers saying that they really are interested in service solutions. But the question is, uh, then what is the investment for brands to provide those solutions to the consumers? When we look at the smart packaging, uh, we have intelligent packaging that uh, has some electronic or mechanical trigger that activates the packaging. Usually it involves some audible or visual signals so consumers' attention is grabbed and they know that they have to act upon something. So for instance, um, the product here, Vital Refresh Cap, it's a water bottle uh, in France that they did uh, as a test bottle, but it was very successful where um, they realized that people are not drinking enough water and often forget to hydrate themselves. So how packaging can address that problem? What they did, they implemented a timer inside of a regular cap that if you set up in a certain amount of time, whether it's half an hour or an hour, once the timer um, is um, out, the little flag pops out on the top of a flag that gives consumer a visual indicator that it's time to drink water. Um, so that's something that's a little bit of a fun, but it's really very functional because it gives consumers a reminder that they need to do something um, important in this case, drink more water. Um, Sky Electrify is uh, one of the examples um, of where we see the use of uh, LED lights and electronically enabled labels. But for instance, in this case, the LED lights on the label move together with the beat of a music. It's something that's more fun and probably more used like in a party or bar environment. But what's important on examples like from Sky uh, Vodka is that this really shows how far the technology can go and what can be done. Uh, if something like this can be done on an entertainment and fun level, then obviously we can see more development coming in the market that address uh, more uh, everyday needs of the consumers. Uh, another way to look at the smart packaging is how it helps to preserve the shelf life, to extend the shelf life, and of course to avoid the food waste. Um, the uh, greatest example we've seen on the market was Insignia Change Label. Um, you see here that it's on the um, Deli Fresh Meat Pack, and once you uh, open the pack first time, you activate the label, and uh, the colors around uh, the, 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 the circle in the middle will change the color based on those three colors around. Uh, so it's either every time you will look at it, it will tell you whether the pack was just opened, you have to use the product soon, or it's already passed best before date. And what it really does, it helps consumers to use the product wisely to avoid the food waste. Uh, and of course, it uh, saves um, uh, time and money for both uh, the consumers um, and the brand, and it comes with a lot of extra value. Um, looking at the um, medicine and a lot of um, healthcare products, compliance is a big issue. Uh, again, smart packaging technologies are something that can help to address that. Uh, for instance, in this case, every time uh, the um, tablet is um, uh, uh, taken out of the pack, you receive a signal on the uh, smartphone app and you know uh, that the person uh, took the medicine. Uh, so things like that really ensure the compliance and uh, a little bit more control um, over, especially in medicine, over whether the product was taken correctly on time uh, and whether the uh, patient complied uh, with the rules of the medication. Uh, another way uh, when we look at the fun and functionality in packaging is uh, how we can actually connect the both. So for instance, the Grolsch example, uh, the beer, uh, they did a lot of different ways how to leverage packaging to provide fun and functionality to consumers in different markets. For example, uh, on the example on the left from Russia, uh, they have a Bluetooth beacon that's um, in the cap of a bottle. So every time you open the bottle, you activate um, uh, the, the cap and by tapping into your either smartphone or a tablet or computer, you get a free movie. And what's even more interesting that the idea how they came up with it was that traditionally what brands would do, they would put some promotional information on a label of a pack saying, if you go on a this and this website and enter the code, you might get a free movie. Well, they decided that there is a faster and more fun and easier way to do this. And in this case, they came up with this um, Bluetooth um, activated um, 
bottle a beer can. The example on the right from Netherlands is the same brand, but this time they have a cooling meter on a can of a beer uh, that uh, turns and changes the color depending how cold is your um, can of a beer, which by having it in a fridge or in a cooler, you can see uh, whether it's ready for consumption, which is one of the important attributes uh, for uh, beer consumers overall uh, is uh, the coolness of a product. Um, the other uh, thing that we're looking is, is origin and provenance of products and packaging. Where are you from and what does it mean becomes more and more important to the consumers today. Um, not only it's because of the, we've seen a lot of food scandals uh, pretty much in all markets around the world, but also today consumers have a lot of access to information. They make very informative decisions. And when they actually go shopping, they already are armed with a ton of information they know information about the ingredients, the products. With that, it's becoming more and more important for brands to leverage packaging to make sure that the, when the consumer is in store and deciding between the products, that packaging speaks to them and communicates that provenance and origin of a product. Because consumers want to know where it's from, how it was manufactured. Um, it goes all the way along using environmentally friendly claims, ethical claims such as ethical human, ethical animal, ethical charity. Consumers really want to know what are the brands doing beyond just you know taking a product and packing it and putting it in a pack. And what we have seen that there are a number of ways how packaging can be leveraged uh, to communicate that to the consumers. Uh, what's important that, for instance, in the U.S., 71% of consumers rely on packaging to tell them whether the product is locally made. With that, we have seen a lot of packages that would indicate that provenance by using uh, local you know, maps, colors, um, some seals of the organizations that prove that the product is whether organic or locally made, etc., because that's really the something that consumers are looking for because they want to be persuaded again and again that the product is safe to use and also if it's important for them to support some certain initiatives again packaging speaks to them about what they're looking at um, for instance uh, in a lot of dairy products as well as frozen food we have seen a number of ways how brands are leveraging those local um, farmers uh, on the pack. For example, the uh, Tina uh, Dairy Company in Norway, um, they leverage all four sides of their uh, milk carton and they do not only put um, like a map or, but they really go into a lot of details, um, giving consumers information about the farm where the product comes from, about the farmers, about the cows, about the milk, about everything. And uh, this example is really uh, great because usually we see like a small indication or a claim on the front of the pack. To consumers today with how much information already have, what it often is not enough. Uh, a lot of times we see just a link to a website or something that uh, in many cases leads to nowhere. So this way what Tina did in Norway is really a great example of how uh, packaging with how much retail space is on it can be leveraged to communicate that information to the consumers and to tell them what they're actually looking for. Uh, a lot of times what we've seen when we uh, talk about the provenance and origin of product and how it's communicated on packaging is the use of QR codes. Um, very often the QR codes would be put somewhere on the pack, usually on the um, back side of a label or towards the bottom of the pack and consumers not only have difficulties finding it but also um, they scan it and there is either not information or just a small video or just they don't find it very useful uh, we went and asked our consumers both in the uk and the us whether they find qr codes on food packaging and household packaging um, useful and uh, as you see uh, the numbers here on this chart show that indeed 10 and below percent of consumers both in the US and the UK find the QR codes on the packs uh, valuable or even if they actually scan them and see if there is anything there for them that gives them more information about the product. Uh, that said, 
we do not think that QR codes, um, they're definitely not an example of a smart packaging, but they can provide functionality if they're used in a smart way. And one of the best examples that we've seen in the market so far is um, Zigo um, bars. Um, this is really a great example how QR codes are not put somewhere on the back of the pack and how you really QR code is used in a very smart way. Uh, because essentially what it does, and especially in uh, this example you see here, which is uh, the lately redesigned pack, QR codes, uh, which in this case is called Z code, um, is not only leveraged and became sort of a part of design, but it's and they get uh, the energy bar allergen content at the batch level. So it really has a high, high functionality to it, and consumers don't need to look for that information. But they simply take out the phone, scan it, but they don't need to look, well, where is the QR code, where is that information? They don't need to uh, bother themselves with reading the label. This is really an example of how QR codes can be used in a smart way. And uh, looking at the other ways of the provenance, if we go beyond uh, food and drink categories, another big uh, category where that provenance aspect is important is uh, beauty care packaging. Um, authenticity, uh, counterfeited products, uh, high margin, or a lot of luxury brands are constantly looking for smart packaging solutions that can speak to the provenance and authenticity of a product. There has not been a lot of um, examples out there in the market that are yet and speak to this. However, there are a lot of developments that might actually be uh, commercialized sometime in the future. Uh, for instance, this uh, was created by the researchers from the University of Michigan and uh, the University in South Korea, and it's a film that's covered with uh, micro pillars. And one part of a film, uh, that's where you embed your logo or um, some sort of statement that speaks to the authenticity of a brand and how it works that once um, you breathe on a label and the moisture uh, reveals the image that's printed on, uh, on this film. Uh, of course, it might pose the questions how it can be used in packaging, so most likely it will be used on the primary packaging, not secondary, so that consumers pick up the product in store and when they get home, they uh, see the product wrapped in a film like that, uh, they can reveal the image and uh, really make sure that the product they got is authentic. Um, so hopefully we will see something like that or similar technologies um, where in beauty care categories where this authenticity is also very important. Um, so as a summary, uh, we really think that the uh, packaging functionality is very important to the consumers. While they don't mind to be entertained uh, and also have some uh, fun with the pack, it's really important to what packaging does to the everyday consumer who goes shopping and who is the primary shopper of the family. Because the uh, people like that would really be able to evaluate the functionality and the importance of packaging. Uh, so we really think that it's important to understand the difference uh, of packaging solutions and how they work hard to provide those solutions to the consumers. Um, it's important to determine what solution will create emotional differentiation on shelf. Uh, what speaks to the consumers, that provenance attribute, the local claims, the uh, information that speaks to consumers' health, product safety, food safety, etc. Um, and of course, that uh, there is always um, an intersection of functionality uh, and um, smart attributes. Um, and uh, we really see that a lot of technologies can help to bridge that innovation gap. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you really found it helpful. And uh, now I will go ahead and answer the questions. Um, I see the first question coming in. Uh, what categories do you see provenance playing the most important role? Uh, so we have seen so far that, especially in food, uh, provenance is important in two types of categories. Dairy and all fresh products where consumers want to make sure that the product is safe to eat and prepared meals and frozen foods because consumers are oftentimes not sure that the product is healthy to eat and about the ingredients that are being used. 
So the provenance also of um, those prepared meals um, is very important uh, to show them that uh, it really is a safe product to eat and it's healthy. Uh, but of course, overall, we can see that also uh, playing out in pretty much any uh, food and drink category where ingredients and the source of ingredient and the provenance um, of where they come from has to be communicated uh, on pack. Uh, another question here, um, do you think QR codes will be eventually replaced by another technology? Um, that's a very good question. We have seen QR codes being out there for quite many years now. As I mentioned, unfortunately, most of the brands do not use them uh, in a smart way. Uh, Zico, for example, uh, to mention again, is really the one that shows how they can be used in a smart way. We have seen some come and go technologies that potentially could have replaced it, but we really haven't seen them um doing that so we really think that most likely qr codes are still there to stay and we hope that more and more brands will use them in a really smart way that provides some added value and functionality um so that hopefully will uh provide new uh new ways and more utility uh, to how they expressed on the pack uh, and I think here we are pretty good on time. Um, again, thank you very much uh, for your um, attention, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, you have my contact information uh, on this uh, slide here. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to um, uh, reach out to me, and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good day.